Hi, thanks for coming to my artist talk about the Drawn of the Marbo Library residency that I've had here for the last couple of months. Uh, behind me, you can see the, the major artwork of the turtle, Terra Nullius uh, Redacted, which is a culmination of a few themes that I've covered here at the uh, residency. So I was looking at a way to talk about the impact of the Eddie Marbo case, and then further talk about his connection with the JCU Library. And so between conversations with Gail Marbo and the Bindal Elders, I came up with the decision to use the turtle as a representation of both their cultures and all indigenous cultures that were impacted by the success of the Marbo case. So if you look at this image, you see the turtle, which in other cultures also is used as a symbol of longevity, symbol of wisdom, symbol of knowledge throughout many other different cultures around the world. Uh, this turtle is floating forwards and you can see the, the trail through the water, that sense of it moving forwards. So it's, it's come from the past. And in the background of the turtle, you can see this structure that actually looks like walls with like a gate there. But if you look at the front of the library, that actually is similar to the front of the library and you can see the circular windows in that wall. So I wanted to give the sense of this turtle being the indigenous culture, being freed by the, by the impacts of the Marbo case with the indigenous winning their land rights back. So yeah, I'd just like to talk to some of the artworks and take you around the exhibition and discuss some of the things at any stage. If you have any questions, just um, let me know and we'll sort of address that as we move along. So this is basically the start of it. This is where I started and I actually started drawing right here in this spot and I started looking up at the stairs as a point of interest. So the first works I actually did in this whole residency were these sketches here where I was using the stairs as the, the primary object. And from there I started moving around the library and just started looking at some um, key parts of the structure and the architecture and how the students were interacting with the library. So you can see students and clearly recognisable parts of the library throughout the works. I started introducing colour to some of the works just to really highlight that I was looking at the nature in this work, for example, and using the different same colours like red or the green through that. And here you can see the development of including the students in the work as red to make them really stand out from the books and the structure which all leads back to my initial statement of how I viewed the student interaction with the library. Okay, so one of the things that I picked up early on when I started doing the small sketches was that a small A4 sketch wasn't really capturing the, the true width of the library, the, the, the size of the library. So I started developing these panoramic works. And so I would just focus on one spot and I would draw that and then I would just attach more paper and just continue the drawing until I'd sort of finish that 180 degree sort of view. Yeah. So this was one of the first ones I did and I was really interested in capturing the different layers and depth of the library just in one image. So you've got that sense of the deep sort of enclave going down and there's the uh, separation in the middle of the building and you've got the top floor as well. And then I just continued that through and it was interesting to see how the structure kind of snaked in and out of your perspective. And so when you stand central, you get that sort of 180 degree view across the whole work. As you can see on this bottom one here, which is that recognisable lower floor common room area. And you can see again, those repetitive circular windows. Uh, again, like this is deliberately left sort of empty. Um, and this was the start of the COVID restrictions. And as the library started having restricted access and people started going uh, away on the semester break, there was obviously noticeably a lot less students here. And so I sort of tried to capture that sense of uh, emptiness in the actual work itself. So these works you can see are very similar to the sketches I did on site, the initial sketches, but these are what I considered more resolved artworks. So I took these back to my studio and I took a combination of the photos I'd taken around the library and the initial sketches I had done to complete these works. So you'll notice the key difference between these works and the initial sketches is instead of being black ink on white paper, uh, white ink on black paper. And I did that for a few reasons, but mostly the point of using this particular medium was addressing the theme of legacy, and in particular looking at Eddie Queeky Marbo's involvement with the library and creating that legacy of the Marbo case and how that affected Australian history from then on. So 
The works are deliberately white ink on black and the black paper is a metaphor for indigenous land and the white ink is a metaphor for colonization and everything that's come past. Throughout the works, there are key parts of uh, symbology that reference both the Torres Strait Islands culture and local Aboriginal Indigenous culture as well. And I achieved that by uh, talking with elders from both cultures to see what was culturally uh, respectful and important to capture within the works. So these show different views of the library. This obviously is the a view from the other corner there uh, with the pond in the front. And I thought it was really interesting to talk about like the, involved, the interaction between nature and the library and look at the library uh, from that angle, that very dominating sort of corner. This one's actually the other end. And I particularly was drawn to capturing the sculptures that are on that corner. And to me, it sort of felt, I called this one strangers because to me it felt like uh, these objects are actually sort of like alien investigators and they're exploring, they've seen this structure and they kind of seem this sense of sort of floating towards it, which kind of feels a bit strange and out of place uh, in the context of the bush and the facility. Uh, this, I call this one the uh, lost portal because it, it's, it's, it has the sense of being like this portal to another dimension that's been kind of forgotten about. It's kind of been grown over by the jungle. And um, this is actually on the far end of the building and you sort of have to go into the bushes a little bit to sort of see it. But once you've seen it, it's, it's always there, you know, it's there. I just think it feels very mysterious to me. Like I just want to go in a bit deeper and explore. And this is actually one of the later works I did, which is actually one of the walkways into the library. And I thought it was interesting to uh, compare that to the initial structure of the library and then something that's a very modern sort of addition to the, to the library and the grounds with these beautiful curved walkways, which also reflective of the architecture within the library, all those curves you see everywhere, and the beautiful mirrored ceilings to the walkway, which, which gives you protection from the sun and rain as you're moving around the library. So here you can see, these are my initial studies of what would become the resolved works. So here I was looking more at uh, composition of the artworks, how they would sit on the paper, they seem a lot brighter than the larger works and I felt a bit restricted with the size of the nib I was using. And so I decided to do larger works than this just so I could achieve a finer line and have a, a greater uh, range of depth and tone. And so again, you can see the main structures that I've found around the library that are of particular interest. Again, this circular window that I sketched early on is a repetitive image. And I think this is quite an interesting part of the library that few people know about, which is the waterfalls, the man-made waterfalls that are on either side of the library. So whenever there's a heavy rain, the rain, the water will collect on the flat roof and it's deliberately channeled down both sides and you get this uh, waterfall effect. And I think just looking at that closeness there, just it gave me the sense of it being like sort of an, an ancient temple, like an Aztec sort of temple in the jungle somewhere. So I thought that was a really interesting image to sort of capture. And also um, by capturing this image and, and drawing it, it's, it's bringing attention to that. And I, more people now are, are aware of it, which is a, another important thing to do with these artworks. And after doing the smaller studies on A3, I decided to then put them up a size. I just thought that the bigger size, you know, better encapsulates the sense of the grandeur of the library itself. Uh, this one obviously is a, a larger version of those circular windows. And this one here that we were talking about, this is actually the doorway to the exit near the uh, Juliet's coffee shop there. And I thought it was quite interesting because again, it has this circular feel, which is a, an object and a shape that's uh, repeated throughout the library and my artworks. And this was taken uh, in three o'clock in the afternoon and I was having a coffee with a friend and I looked across and saw that sort of shape presented and I thought I need to um, do an artwork about that. So during my residency, I was asked to talk about four different themes, which were people, place, knowledge, and legacy. And part of these, it's, I found easy to obviously draw the library and physical things, but then when you have to start drawing concepts, it becomes a lot more challenging. So I started to develop my artwork at a more conceptual level, and these abstract works are a result of that. So basically, I was looking at how people interact with the library and what they use the library for. And 
obviously the library is full of books and a lot of people still come here to use that, but it's 2020, so a lot of people actually come here to use the library for its access to the internet and Wi-Fi. And the internet's not a tangible thing, so I, I had to do an abstract thing. So again, I've used the red redness to indicate students. And this one's called Infobarn, which is uh, a take on the um, what they call the internet as the internet highway. And so it's giving the sense of these computer cables which are throughout the library as, as main ports that um, access the, or provide internet to terminals, to, com to computer terminals. But I was trying to give it a more organic feel. So again, this is another artwork that's pushing the more abstract concept of people and place. And so I really wanted to give a sense of uh, the library's important in the quest for knowledge. And so I've sort of attempted to produce something that looks like a set of stairs. So I've attempted to illustrate the, the path for knowledge. And if you consider the first step is that very first step of coming onto the uh, university grounds. And then all the way to the top at the very top is the path to enlightenment, which would be the ultimate goal of achieving a PhD, for example. These crosses on the path are indicative of students who have paused or stopped their, their journey. But also this was produced uh, during the COVID restrictions period. And we've all become quite familiar with seeing X's on the ground, which denote where you should be as far as uh, social distancing practices occur. So this is one of two works I built as a pair, uh, specifically for this part of the library. Uh, so this was done in reference to the COVID restrictions as well. And this is a combination of two words. So I've looked at addressing the themes of Penrose, which is the Penrose Stairs drawings, made famous by MC Escher but also the word canopsia, which is the sense of being in a place that used to be occupied, but is now abandoned. So there's that weird sense of emptiness. And so I've tried to reflect that in the artworks to talk about uh, how the COVID restrictions sort of impacted on the library space. And so if you look at these shapes behind me, there's actually a representation of the stairs, which have been a reoccurring theme in my works as well. But I wanted to give the sense of it looking like a sailing ship and sailing through uh, difficult waters and an unknown future and challenging times. So that's what I've attempted to draw in there. I've deliberately used uh, recycled materials in this drawing. So as you can see, I've drawn on top of books. And so they were, these books were being discarded. Uh, they were too old for the, the collection. They had to be removed. Uh, so I salvaged the books took the paper out and glued them on top. Coincidentally, uh, they're actually old uh, German medical books about infection, which I thought was an interesting parallel with the COVID restrictions as well. But I also liked just using recycling materials to make this artwork and deliberately have a rough outer edge to talk about the, the weird rough sort of feeling of you know, the, the, the COVID restrictions when there was that period of uncertainty everything was unsettled. It wasn't uh, smooth sailing, so to speak. Let's talk about this artwork. This artwork was driven by conversations I had with students. And so they, one of the things that kept coming up as why they liked the library was the smell and the sense of familiarity. And they liked the smell of the library. So I started looking at what produces the smell. Why, why do libraries smell? Because that's something I've noticed as well. And so I looked into it and it actually turns out that the smell we smell is called lignin. And so that's a byproduct of the chemical that they put into all wood products, paper products. So that stabilizes the paper product. And so as the books deteriorate, that smell or the chemical is actually released into the atmosphere and, and we smell that. And the reason we like that is because it has a chemical structure that is very similar to vanilla. So it has a sweet sort of smell and we're generally hardwired to like that. So I thought that was really interesting. And so I wanted to sort of discuss that in an artwork. So I wanted to use the skull as a representation of death and decay. I wanted to use, highlight the chemical side of that and the science behind that explanation. So I've put in the chemical structure for that throughout the works and I've tried to give it the sense of a mist of a smoke sort of moving around uh, the area as well. So I'd just like to talk to you about my last piece, which is called You. And this one is directly dedicated to the students and staff of the library, but particularly the students. So I really wanted to capture the sense of energy 
that happens in the library when it's bustling and full of students and everyone's studying and reading and there's that real tangible sense of, of energy in the library. So I really wanted to sort of capture that. And as I researched energy, I found that in scientific terms, the letter U is actually a representation of potential energy. And so I thought that was really interesting to look at the students as a potential energy. So they've come to the library, they're doing their studies and they're going to take their studies onward and then have uh, successful careers and achieve amazing things. So I just wanted to talk about the students being this source of energy and, and the reason why the library is here and it is what it is.